It's Freestyle Friday! Coming in hot with quick shots of inspiration on a variety of topics. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, I used to think that I didn't need therapy. Then I realized working on myself, getting to know myself even better and enabling me to thrive in life was actually the play. That was cool, right? Because without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. And the good news is therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work, not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you because BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. So join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Getting Magnetic listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash getting magnetic. That's better H-E-L-P dot com slash getting magnetic. What is going on? Getting magnetic family. Super excited to be here with you. I'm actually tuning in. I am recording this from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. I am on one of my best friends bachelor party. Shout out Sean, Sean Percy Travis. And I'm not going to lie, actually, I've had a couple margaritas. It's Cinco de Mayo as of the time of this recording. And Sandy and I realized we were like, whoa, we don't have a Freestyle Friday lined up. We have so many episodes lined up, but not a Freestyle Friday. And I was like, shoot, well, we're the type of people, it, we could easily just not release an episode. But we're like, no, no, that's not how we roll. Like, this is what we do. So here I am in Cabo at 9 p.m., a few margaritas deep, recording a, a Freestyle Friday because that's what we do, that commitment, right? That consistency. It could have been easy to say, ah, you know, it's fine. We won't do it. But no, that's not, that's not the standard Sandy and I aim to set in our life. And I was thinking about Freestyle Friday, you know, content, episode ideas. And I heard John Maxwell say this the other day and it just came to me, it hit me. And I was like, I need to expand on this. John Maxwell, I call him, you know, the leadership goat. He's one of the best leadership trainers in the world. If you aren't familiar with him, get familiar with him. He has written so many books on leadership and they are, if you are looking to raise your leadership, read John Maxwell. But I heard him say this. He said, every miracle begins with a problem. Every miracle begins with a problem. So what does that mean? That means when you have a problem, you're blessed. You're blessed because you're a candidate for a miracle. Problems are blessings. Problems are, they're put in our life as tests. Tests to help us grow and level up into the person we are meant to become. Right? Like, think about that. So really, the the only person who has a problem is the person who doesn't have a problem. And think about, you know, the problems you've had in your life or have right now. If you have a little problem, you're a candidate for a little miracle. If you have a big problem, you're a candidate for a big miracle. And what do I mean by all this? What does John Maxwell mean by all this? This is what I think. I think our greatest growth, our greatest triumphs, the highest highs, they come from feeling the lows. They come from going through and growing through problems. There's no such thing as this perfect yellow brick road to what you want, where like, let's say you want something extraordinary in your life, an extraordinary life, an extraordinary marriage, business, body. You're gonna put, if you want that, if you want something extraordinary, there's no like comfort zone, easy way, 
yellow brick road to it. When you want something big, you're going to put a whole host of problems in your life. A whole host of hurdles in your way. Let's say your kid wants to grow up and be a professional athlete. Shoot, if they decide on that, if that's what they want, they're going to put a whole lot of hurdles and problems in their life leading up to that. But that's good. That's, those are the tests. A lot of problems will be in our path when we want something great, when we want to create something great. And, and what is that? What are those problems in our path? That's God. That's the universe. Whatever it is you believe, that is them testing you, saying, how bad do you want it? I'm going to place this problem in your life. I'm going to place this hurdle between you and what you want because I'm going to test how bad you want it because this, what you want, the person who deserves that, the person who earns that is the person that's going to go over this hurdle, that's going to work through this problem. I think back, you know, I think back to my life and I, I think back to, honestly, I loved football my whole life. It was like my first love. I played it since first grade and I was pretty good at it. And by the time I got to high school, you know, it came pretty naturally to me. And I, I was a, a good athlete and I was a really good high school player and I got, you know, college scholarship and I get to college. Right. And all of a sudden I'm like, Whoa, everyone was the best player on their team. Everyone was all state, all conference, all whatever. Whoa. There's a lot, a lot of other people won the state championship too for their States. Oh my gosh. It, it's all the best of the best come together in college. And then, you know, even beyond that, the NFL is the best college players. So I get there. And I, I'm coming in thinking I'm this hot shot, right? And it's humbling because you're like, whoa, there's a lot of other really, really good players here. I'm all of a sudden at the bottom again. I'm a freshman and there's, there's grown men out there playing. I'm 17 years old getting on this field. There's a lot of problems in my way. But what I think to our, my first day of freshman football camp, you know, I came in undersized. I actually got mono that summer. I lost 20 pounds. I was sick for like two weeks. I lost 20 pounds. I came in like borderline emaciated. And my coach was like, what the hell did you do all summer? And I was like, coach, no, I can explain. I had mono. I lost 20 pounds. I'll put it back on. I had a kind of, it was basically written in the sand that I was going to redshirt that year. But I get to the first day of, of training camp, football, Big deal. College. First day. First impression. My roommate and I didn't know there was a 15 minute mandatory B to our first lift. They were going to test all of the freshmen, test all of the freshmen in the weights and whatever. They were going to put us through like a crazy workout to see who would quit, who was there to stay. I didn't know we were supposed to be there 15 minutes early. So I roll in 15 minutes late. <laughs> with my roommate we roll into the wrong door we walk in we see everyone sweating out of breath huddled around the strength and conditioning coach who also happened to me be my positional coach and the the door slams behind us and everyone looks over and all of a sudden I'm like oh damn what just happened and the coach just starts ripping into us he's like wait Brett what the hell are you doing you're showing up late on the first day. What does that say about your character? Get the hell outside. Wait for me out there until I'm done. And I'll come deal with you, you two fools. And we're sitting outside like, oh my gosh, this is our first impression. Like we are screwed. This is my personal positional coach. This is who I will spend the most time with. And I'm in the doghouse. We're throwing rocks at the wall. We're sitting there outside. We're waiting out there 45 minutes, hour, hour and a half. He never comes out. We're like, shoot. Let's go just peek in. We go peek in. No one's in there. He just left us out there. And I'm like, dang. I had a, that was a pivotal moment in my life. You know, I'm transitioning from high school, school, sports, you know, I could, I could get by on, you know, my ability. All of a sudden you get to business school, you get to college football. It's no longer ability. It's work ethic. It's hard work. It's effort. It's showing up. 
and working on your skills and talent. And so I realized I just put a whole lot of hurdles in my way in this football career, this college football career in this season. And it was a moment where I realized I can do one of two things. I can hang them up. I can say, shoot, I'm screwed. I bad luck. I didn't know it wasn't my fault. I didn't know I was supposed to be, you know, 15 minutes early. I didn't know it wasn't my fault. My coach hated me. He had it out against me, yada, yada, yada. Or I could say, I'm in the doghouse and I got to work my way out. And the only way is to, to shut my mouth and work harder than everyone else and prove my way and dig my way out. And guess what? That whole season, that coach had it out for me. He gave me like the worst number, the worst pads, the worst helmet. I looked like a, a bum out there, right? On the field. Like everyone's looks good in their positional kind of stuff. I look like a lineman as a wide receiver. I look like a scrub basically. And he's putting me on the scout team and making me go against the starting defense. And I'm, you know, getting banged up. And, and he just put me in the doghouse. He like, he tried to get me to quit. He was testing my resolve. He was testing my character. I put a lot of problems in my way by wanting, by saying, you know what? No, I'm going to dig in. I'm going to lean into this. I know what I want. I want to play football here. I want to get my degree and play football here and be a student athlete. And now, all of a sudden, there was this pain. Pain drives us, right? There was this external motivation factor that this coach hated me or he had it out for me. And he was, let's say he's a hater, right? Haters drive us. Pain drives us. And so all of a sudden I had this additional motivational factor to be the best I can be. So that season I, I shut my mouth. I put the work in. I ended up red shirting because of two factors. One, I came in 20 pounds underweight because of mono. And two, I was late and I was in the doghouse and I knew I wasn't going to play. So I red shirted, meaning I preserved that season. I practiced. I got to go against the starting defense all year on scout team. And that meant, meant I get to play another four seasons. And, you know, fast forward my career, actually that next season, sophomore year, guess what happened? He got fired or he went to another school. I got my opportunity. I got an opportunity. I took it and ran with it. And all of a sudden the coaches started to respect me. They're like, whoa, okay. Wade's been working. Okay, Wade could add value to this team. And I played every year thereafter and actually elevated into a starting role you know, that next year. And guess what? Because I redshirted that freshman year, I was able to play a fifth year when I was going to get my graduate degree, my master's degree in finance. And I was able to get my finance degree at a discount because I had an additional year. So it comes back to everything happens for a reason, right? Or your problems are your biggest tests. They're your biggest growth spurts. They're your biggest opportunity. There's always a dip before a pop. I had a big dip that year, but it was setting me up for the pop, but I had to stay in the game. I had to work through it. I had to commit to it to, to realize that pop. And I wouldn't, if I could go back, I wouldn't change a thing. It happened in the most perfect way because I learned a lesson in that low, in that problem. And this isn't the biggest problem in the world. It's just something I thought of while, you know, recording here. But it taught me so much. It taught me work at the grit, resolve, character, owning up for my mistakes. And in the end, it benefited me beyond belief. I was able to go get a graduate degree paid for for that year while I played football. And playing football was awesome. I wanted to play another year. It could not have worked out any better. So what do you think, like when you think about monumental moments in your life, think about them. I'm willing to bet they originated with a struggle. The origin of that monumental moment, what led you there was a struggle, was a problem in your life. So know that if you're going through something right now, you're blessed. It's a blessing. See it as that. Own it. And know that your greatest growth will come from it. Something will flourish from it. So it's almost go think about problems as blessings in your life. When a problem comes in, say, oh, hey there, I see you. I know what we're about to go through and I know what's on the other side of you. So I'm excited. Thank you. You are a blessing. You are all a blessing. Thank you for hanging out with me today. 
Till next time. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. So remember, you are magnetic.